how to properly hold a handgun or pistol with a one-handed grip for film and TV production. That's what we'll answer in today's video. Hi, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. We help actors, stunt performers, filmmakers, and content creators learn professional stunt training for use in film, TV, and live action entertainment. Before we get underway, if you'd like to add pistol and revolver movie gun training to your acting or stunt performer skill set, check out our highly popular online master course at MovieGunTraining.com or click on the link below this video. You can learn all the movie set gun safety basics, how to safely draw and shoot a pistol for film and TV production, how to properly hold you know, the pistol, uh, tactical movements, pistol disarms, pistol reloads, how to do scene work with pistols and revolvers, and more. All taught by pro armorers for the film and TV industry. You can sign up now and start training now. Go to MovieGunTraining.com for more info. Okay, so we get a lot of questions about tactical movie gun training for film and television. So we're going to share a few tips with you. Okay, so why even use the one-handed grip for film and TV? Well, the one-handed grip frees the other hand to do stuff. Usually it's four things. One could be a Western. A lot of shooting in Westerns are done with just one hand, especially if you're dueling or something. Number two, the character you're playing could be shot in the shoulder, and now this arm is taken out of the fight, and the only one that you have left is this one. You've got to you know, shoot with this hand. The uh, third thing, and this is actually very common in movies, is that you'll have two pistols, so one in each hand. And this way you'll be shooting at, you know, villains in different directions, bow, 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 right? And very realistic, of course, and uh, yet highly cinematic. And the fourth reason is the other hand is free to do some kind of cool martial arts move, like you might have someone wrapped up in a hammerlock here while you're shooting at other villains over here. Check out the clip from the movie Proud Mary to see this in action. Where's Luca? <clears throat> Wrong answer. Now I'm actually an experienced stunt coordinator and armor for film and TV turned full-time director. This is something I plan to do from the beginning of my career, even attending and graduating film school as a director. Along my journey, I noticed that being a stunt coordinator in armor made me a better director, and being a director made me a better stunt coordinator in armor. Now, how this benefits you is that I can share with you insights and experience from both sides of the camera, as well through all phases of production. Okay, so before we begin movie gun training, we always do a safety briefing. Now, this is different than the one that we do on set since you're at home and we're not actually issuing any prop guns to you. Yet with us, safety is always paramount. This will serve as your safety briefing. Again, it's different than the ones that we do on set since we're not issuing you any movie guns. Yet, since we wish to instill safe practices into you, we modified it for your benefit. So pick up your movie prop gun, keep your finger off the trigger, make sure it's on safe as well as unloaded. So finger here on the frame, unloaded. Same with this one. Finger here, unloaded, and it's on safe. Now, as a reminder, never do any movie gun training with real firearms. Do not do dry fire. Make sure you invest in a, a good movie prop. If you need to find one, watch our video on how to get a, a movie prop gun for cheap. The link is below this video. We're going to cover some prop gun safety rules that you can use at home. These are different from gun safety rules that you use on a live fire range. You can learn more about the differences with our highly popular video, Real Firearms Training versus Movie Gun Training. The link to it is below this video. So I wish for you to, to memorize the acronym DIFU or DIFU. The DI stands for direction. So we always want, we always want to point the movie gun in a safe direction and never point it at another person. Even if it's a, uh, you know, airsoft or something like that, it doesn't matter. You always, you always train the same way. So there are two directions that are, you are clear to point the firearm in. 
One is straight down into the ground. So if you're up standing around you're between scenes or something, you can take the pistol or the carbine and just let it hang by your side and point straight down to the ground. That's a safe direction. The second direction is whatever the armor determines to be downrange, which is safe. And for you, that'll be a wall. So you choose a wall in your house or your apartment. Make sure it's not a place that's highly trafficked where people can walk in front of you or something. It could even be aiming inside of a closet, right? So whatever, whatever place is good for you. For me, it's gonna be a 180 degree arc from this wall all the way out to camera to this wall. I won't be pointing back that way because sometimes I'll have to show you like this and then sometimes I'll show you like this. So then this 180 degree arc is, my, is down range for me, yet I won't point it back that way. And this is how you have to be so you always are aware of where you're pointing your, your movie prop gun. The F is you always keep your finger off the trigger and you wanna keep it on the frame of any movie prop gun that you're carrying. Keep it away, don't put it here. Some people put it here in a trigger guard, or something like that, no, keep it on the frame until the armorer tells you or shows you otherwise. The U stands for unloaded, so keep it unloaded and you can always check and make sure it's unloaded once again until the armorer tells or shows you otherwise. Okay, this concludes our safety briefing. Now that you've done that, go ahead and insert one magazine into your movie prop gun. And listen to the instructions given by the armorer. Here's the thing to know. It's very simple. We're going to start with what's called a handshake grip. So it's like if you're actually going to shake someone's hand for the first time. See that? That's the handshake grip. So what you do is with your support hand, the hand you're not shooting with, you're going to grab behind the muzzle or the slide of the pistol. And you're going to put the pistol into your handshake grip, all right? So you see that? You've got that little Y right there, it goes right in. Now something to know, the mistake that people make, this portion is called the tang. You don't want any space there, so make sure that that's always tight in your hand. Your fingers then wrap around the grip, the hand grip, and they should be rigid yet not straining, all right? The thumb, goes right there, it too is slightly rigid, it finds its place in a nice comfortable place. Now the last piece of this is your trigger finger. Keep it away from the trigger. Don't let it touch the trigger guard. Some people actually train people to do this, that is incorrect. Do not put your finger on the trigger guard, you want to put it on the frame. This is also the case with revolvers as well. And this is a correct one-handed grip, correct configuration. Now later on in future videos we'll cover how to actually fire, you know, uh, sight picture and aiming and that kind of thing. Yeah, for right now, this is what, what it will look like. You know, this is the correct way of aiming. Now, if you notice, when I aim, you notice there's a slight cant to the pistol. Years ago, people would train, uh, you know, people who were learning firearms to hold the pistol straight up and down. Yeah, what was found is if you notice, if you just hold your hands up like this, you notice there's a slight cant, a natural cant to your hands. It's always best to go with what's natural for your body because that's how your body's built. So it was found that people naturally shoot better, more accurately with a slight cant to the pistol, right? So that's what you want to do. This is a correct for combat shooting. Broken out step by step to make it easier for you to understand. Lastly, we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV, production recommendations, and more. Yeah, before we do, check this out. Let's take a sneak peek and look inside this master course that was made by pro armors for film and TV, stunt coordinators, actors, and filmmakers for professional actors, stunt performers, and filmmakers, and content creators. By the way, if you're a veteran or experienced with firearms, you're gonna learn how to convert your skills into movies and TV. So you can see here, first of all, we designed our platform to be intuitive and easy to use. The moment you log into it with your, on your computer or your phone, you pretty much understand exactly what's going on and you know how to navigate it right away. Now, each of our master courses starts off with an introduction, so you get to meet your instructors, as well as a safety briefing. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at, these, at this now. Those who can't teach. And, and you see the instructors go over their you know, the qualifications, their background, that kind of thing. And also, you get a cheat sheet, which we'll cover in a moment. This is a handout that accompanies uh, the course, helps you to lock in what you're learning plus our private online social community, which we'll cover a little bit later on. You also get our email address and contact information to be able to contact us with any questions that you may have.
Now, as you can see, our innovative master course platform shows you if you finish the instructional or not, or how much of it you did learn. You know, so if you notice, each one is broken down into units. This is what each of these are. And each of these units are broken down into classes or video instructionals. And it makes it easier to, to group everything together. Each of the instructionals are videos and they're about 10 minutes long. There are a few that might be a little bit longer because they have to be, for the most part, they're about 10 minutes long. We like to keep it bite-sized and it makes it easier and more effective for you to learn. One of the other great things about the platform is if you're studying and you're you know, watching or learning some of the videos and say you, you know, you're watching it today and you get busy and you can't watch it again for like a week, you know, in a week's time, you're not gonna remember what you learned last. You gotta look at all these videos and figure out where you left off. No, our platform design, it tells you which instructionals, which classes you completed, right? And then it tells you, you know, how much, what percentage of the unit you actually completed. So this is 50% complete, so two classes were done, and there's two left. So in a week's time, you know to start right here. So with this one, these are pro screen tips for pistol and revolver. It has tactical reloads, speed reloads. A lot of the classes don't teach you how to do this because there's just not enough time to teach someone to do all this stuff, you know, in a two or three hour session. Let's take a look at uh, cinematic pistol reloads, looking at the tactical reload. Let's go and take a look at this one now. See how this looks. Into his hand and, and search the new magazine. Put the old magazine, put the old magazine into his pocket and resume firing. Bang, bang, bang. Now, we other great things that we include are what we call live action video displays. And what these are are things that we're they're clips from actual movies or even live training sessions where you actually can see the techniques being used in movies, TV, or real life. And it really helps you to lock in the, uh, the lessons. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take a look at one of them now. And you see, everything that you're learning, you see how it actually is used in a, in a movie. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tactical pistol disarm triple play. These are pistol disarms, some of the most famous pistol disarms that have been used in film and TV history. I'm gonna come here, turn it around, and fire, bang, bang, okay? Again. Again, we're leveraging the off-body aiming technique, you know, when we're doing that. And whenever we train, we train with solid rubbers. Here's the same kind of pistol disarms from the movie John Wick. We have these in here, so you actually can take a look at it. So let's take a look at one now and see how it actually plays out. Doesn't that look familiar? This one is our monthly sharpen and polish video conference lab. Each month we do this and it's designed to actually help you with your career. Try our Pistol and Revolver Master Course for 48 hours risk-free. After reviewing the Master Course, if you don't like what you see and it doesn't work for you, we'll refund every penny. Who else lets you go through their movie gun training and then if you're not happy, it gives you a complete refund. Bottom line, we're passionate about making our customers happy and keeping them that way. So well worth the investment if you're serious about learning pistol and revolver movie gun training. Now we'll finish up by sharing some tips for character development, film and TV production recommendations and more. Now a few caveats for film performing in film and TV. Number one, never point a firearm at a person when you're on set or any other time really. There will be some occasions where you will point the firearm at a person, yet the armor on set will tell you when to do that and there'll be all sorts of special conditions for that happening. Otherwise, you always point off to the side of the person. In future videos, we'll cover why and the technique that's involved. The second thing is when you're aiming, though this is correct for combat, it's not great for film because you see the pistol is covering up my face. So you always want to play the camera and playing the camera means lowering the pistol slightly so the camera can see your face. And so you see that from the side, here's the correct way, here's the best way for camera. And just watching yourself in the frame afterwards you know you'll see the, the difference one last tip if you're going for self tapes or auditions if you're a police officer a soldier or detective you're here right now if you're going for a villain the villain could also be here in this position when they're shooting yet one that's become a lot more common is tilting the pistol to the side like this it's become like the global you know bad guy or villain way of holding a pistol so if you're doing a self tape an audition for you know a villain or something holding a pistol like this really helps you uh, uh, bring that character to life okay so make sure you like this video and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next movie prop gun training video 
Also, make sure you sign up for our Pro Stunt Tips email newsletter to get professional movie gun prop training tips in your inbox. Lastly, if you'd like more information on our highly popular online pistol and revolver master course, go to movieguntraining.com. Prepare to have your mind blown. Again, my name is Dylan Wilson with CBT Stunt Alliance. Train hard, perform easy. Don't miss our next video where we share with you another movie prop gun training tip. See you next video.